Power of the people This is a principle in democracy that makes it one of the most prevalent type of government in the current world. In this type of government, people are given a chance to have an active participation in politics. All decisions that would be made under the system of democracy should require discourse, debate, and should always consider the public interest. Under the context of this government, majority rule, fair and free elections, civic participation, human rights protection, and law and order should always be advocated and prioritized. Currently, majority of the countries worldwide practice democracy, one of them being the Philippines. Having the privilege to live in a democratic country, Filipinos are able to experience the right in having the power to be part of the political context of a country. In the Philippines, people can participate in free elections and vote for their desired politician who would run the country. People can also make their grievances be heard or address societal issues to the government through mass demonstration or rallies. Free press is also present in the countries where journalists are able to write and share information to the citizen. Lastly, laws that are implemented throughout the country are required to undergo readings and voting where majority rules must be observed. With these practices being present in the country, one could undoubtedly say that democracy in the Philippines is rightfully observed. However, throughout the years, democracy in the country had been unstable and violated. Starting the martial law proclamation during the Marcos regime and the military coup plotters during the Corazon Aquino administration, to the rampant corruption scandals during the government of Estrada, Arroyo, and Benigno Aquino. Even until the current Duterte administration, democracy remains to have its various states and even worsen because of greed and exploitation of those that are in power. This results to the common people experience undemocratic practices such as those that are related to poverty, gender biases, political marginalization, racial inequality, and crisis of representation. We want democracy, but too much democracy is uh, bad for our country. Too much democracy is bad for our country. Undemocratic practices are the actions and situations that does not conform or agree with the principles of democracy. Therefore, undemocratic practices are those that prevents freedom to prosper, takes back sovereignty from the people, intercept the participation of various individuals in politics, shows unjust treatment, and the lack of protection in the rights of every citizen. The manifestation of these undemocratic practices have always been present in every democratic country. In the Philippines, undemocratic practices are rampant and can be directly seen in the current society. Gender bias is perhaps one of the longest undemocratic practices that have existed. This concept can be defined as the propensity to favor one gender over another. It's a type of unconscious bias also known as implicit bias, in which one person unconsciously assigns certain attitudes and prejudice to another person or group of people. These ascribed behaviors have an effect on how an individual perceives and communicates with others. When democracy was first introduced in the city-state of Athens, gender bias is already present. Women have no vote and cannot participate in any political matters. The reason for this is the perception of Athenians that a woman's sole purpose was to bear a child and expected to spend almost all her time at her home. This case of looking at women as inferior to men had continued for many more years. Unlike men, women needed to fight for their right to democratically participate in voting. In the Philippines, the women's suffrage due to their inability to vote ended on April 30, 1937, when an overwhelming majority of Filipina voted in the plebiscite that favored their right to vote in political elections.
the slow rise in women's political representation can be traced to patriarchal norms and traditions, as well as gender stereotypes. It has been said that politics is more a man's world than a woman's. Gender stereotypes portraying women as frail, emotional, and indecisive discouraged voters from supporting female candidates. Although there had been improvement in the context of women participating in politics, a deep gender gap is still being reflected and overshadows the significant achievements of many women in politics. The social, economic, and structural barriers that prevent women from fully participating and being represented still exist. Under the context of not having the full participation and not being represented properly, gender isn't the only subject that is linked with undemocratic practices. Racial inequality is an undemocratic practice that relates to one's ethnicity. Racism is a belief that groups of humans possess different behavioral traits that correspond to their physical appearance and can be divided based on the superiority of one race over another. In the Philippines that of 137 ethnic groups, racial inequality is an issue that can still be observed even in the present day. This case is most likely to happen to indigenous people. In Baguio, Minority Rights Group International estimated 65% of indigenous people that suffer from poverty. Most of them are women working as vendors alongside the city streets that are regularly pestered by the police as a part of the government's anti-pedaling drive. These indigenous people leave their ancestral communities and migrate to cities in search of better livelihood and social services. But in some cases, many of them are forced to leave their ancestral lands because of militarization, tribal conflicts, and the expansion of large-scale developmental projects. When they settle in urban communities, just like Baguio and Manila, not only they experience poverty, they are also prone in being a victim of exclusion because of their limited formal education and their skills not being suitable in an urban context. Racial inequalities within these indigenous people does not only revolve around poverty and exclusion. They are also the common victims of injustices and human rights violations. In the mountains of Mindanao, conflicts between military and the New People Army had tremendous impact on the Lumad people. They are always a subject for militarization within their communities or targeted with extrajudicial killings and torture. According to a report submitted by Katribu National Alliance of Indigenous People to the United Nations back in 2016, the previous Aquino government had committed 102 extrajudicial killings of indigenous people. Despite of calling for an end to the killings of the Lumad, these murders continued to rise under the Duterte administration. This scenario creates a larger barrier for many indigenous people to have access to social necessities including education. Back in 2019, the government allegedly accused Lumad schools being a training ground for communist New People's Army. This is then followed by the Department of Education ordering the closure of 55 Lumad schools affecting almost 1,500 students. Even until now, Lumad students still appeal to the government to reopen their schools and be back to their communities, claiming that education is not only for themselves but also for all Lumad youth who need education. Under the context of racial inequality, being an undemocratic practice, cultural domination can also be seen as related to its concept. This concept is considered to be undemocratic because it includes a context of some cultures being superior compared to others. Ethnic minorities including indigenous people are affected in a way that they need to fight for their autonomy and survival against mainstream cultures that exist. It is undemocratic because it gives a sense of social injustice. Although there are laws that are made to implement them, such as the Republic Act No. 8371 that aims to recognize, protect, and promote the rights of indigenous people, they are still vulnerable when it comes to exploitation, marginalization, and oppression by those that are politically dominant. A democratic country 
practices equality even in terms of one's race. In a democratic country, no social sector should be left out and the development in a national scale should be inclusive. When talking about undemocratic practices, poverty remains to be on the top. By definition, poverty is a social condition where a person lacks in resources such as finance or other essential things. Many kinds of causes such as lack of education and unemployment results to poverty. Poverty is a global problem that many people experience, especially in poor countries. In the Philippines, Poverty has been observed throughout the ages and still continues even in the present administration. With the rise of the COVID-19 pandemic, experts are already expecting an inevitable increase in hunger and poverty in the country. In the latest hunger survey of Filipino families conducted by the Social Weather Station, or SWS, their data shows that there are around 4.2 million involuntarily hungry Filipinos in May 2020. This is twice as high in their previous conducted survey in December 2019. Even so, with or without the pandemic, there is still a significant rate of poverty in the Philippines. In a general perspective, poverty is much worse because it leads to other social political problems and issues. Poor economic growth is the main and obvious effects of poverty in the Philippines. As years pass by, Filipino families just keeps on getting bigger as well as the population of the country. According to the Philippine Statistics Authority, 21.6% of the Philippine population in 2015 is living below the national poverty line. In the later years, the Philippines had a population of 106,651,922 in 2018. This shows that there is an increase of more than 1.7 million people compared to 2017. These data show that life for the poorest of the poor that are living in big cities could only get worse. The continuous rise in the population of the Philippines fully affects the country's economic growth in a sense that many more people not being educated as well as getting decent jobs make it difficult for the country's economy to grow. The fact that the cause of poverty is quite vague is one of the reasons why the eradication of such problem is still taking a very slow process. According to the United Nations Social Policy and Development Division, inequalities in income distribution and access to productive resources, basic social services, and opportunities is one of the main reasons of poverty. Under this context, government is responsible and crisis of representation is linked. In a representative democracy type of government just like the Philippines, citizens vote lawmakers so that they can serve as representatives of the citizens that would voice out and address the grievances of the people. The concept of crisis of representation takes place when these elected officials fail to listen on what the people they are meant to represent wants them to address. The presence of crisis of representation on a national scale gives up the major idea of democracy when it comes to inclusivity. This undemocratic practice opens up a topic of the government being unresponsive on what the public needs, especially by those that are marginalized. Because of crisis of representation, many social sectors are left in suffrage. One example is the agricultural sector in the Philippines. Agricultural workers in the country, especially farmers, still remain among the poorest, most disadvantaged group. A long-standing reason for this is the declining prices of pallet prices in the market that is due to intensive neoliberalization of the economy. The government's idea of liberalization manifested in the removal of price and market controls, the promotion or importation, the reduction of state intervention, and the privatization of services. These manifestations of liberalization can be observed to be included in many laws that are approved by the government, including the Republic Act 101203 or the Rice Tarification Law that took effect last 2019. The instance of the farmers 
still having to experience poverty and extreme injustice in their work is just one reflection on how they are not properly represented in the national government. The idea of lawmakers making their livelihood much worse is one in instance where the crisis of representation is observed. The presence of poverty, racial inequality, and gender bias equally provides limitation to those who experience it when it comes to political opportunities. Because of these undemocratic practices, political marginalization can be observed in the Philippines. This phenomenon greatly implies that democracy's principle of equal participation of citizens is greatly disrupted in the country. Gender bias not only limits societal opportunities of women, but also disables validations of the LGBT community to represent themselves freely. Many Filipinos still contradict sexual preferences of these individuals, which leads to the discrimination of society against the said community. The idea of poor people not getting the privilege of experiencing proper education provides them limited knowledge about politics. This implies that poverty makes many people be unaware of their rights and the belief of them having no power in participating in a political agenda continues. Racial inequality promotes the subject of many minority races being insignificant when it comes to politics. Just like with people living under poverty, there is sufficient access to basic societal services especially with education deprives them from effectively participating in politics. Having political marginalization in a democratic country is perhaps an indication that the essence of democracy is exclusive only to those that are privileged and has an efficient access to basic societal needs. The presence of marginalization puts the lives of many individuals in the situation of injustice. Political marginalization deprives the marginalized in making their voices be validated and their situation known to lawmakers. This undemocratic practice is interrelated to other undemocratic practices. Political marginalization exists because there is an exclusion of people in the context of politics based on their ethnicity, gender, and social status. For many years, the Philippines had been lawfully considered to be a democratic country. However, just like many countries, the manifestation of democracy to the people are bumpy and had constantly been prone to various issues that are undemocratic. In the present, the current state of democracy in the country can be claimed as thin and still experiences phenomena that contradicts to the principles of democracy. The presence of many undemocratic practices that can be observed are definitive factors that implies the full essence of democracy is still yet to be experienced. Social biases, exclusion, and constant political corruption must be abolished before this finally happens. For many Filipinos, the fight for equal rights to access and representation. The right to freedom and security. And the right of having the life that everybody equally deserves. Is a democratic fight that still has a long way to go.